Welcome to the third tutorial of bgraphy. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to create surfaces. We are going to explore different components such as loft, extrude, and sweep. And then we will also look at how to add material or color to your surfaces. So head on to bgraphy.com, follow along with me. You log in, you go to editor, and then you can create a new model. Name it surfaces and create. As soon as you create, it'll open up and you'll get a fresh blank canvas. Here, type in surface, then you'll see all the different options that you have to create any surface. We'll look at just a few for now and then you can explore it on your own. There is curve to surface. This component has the input curve and the output as surface. It requires a closed curve. An example of a closed curve could be circle. This is a default circle. If you connect this circle, you'll get a surface. If you have a rectangle, let me disconnect this and you connect this rectangle to the curve to surface, you'll get a rectangle, rectangular surface. It's very straightforward. Curve to surface requires a closed curve and then you'll get your surface. Let's look at another one. We've got sweep, loft. There is another thing called extrude, which you can't see here, but it is there. So let's uh, first look at extrude because it is simpler. Go to extrude curve and you can explore the other extrudes by yourself also. What this requires is a curve and a vector. We'll give it a curve, a rectangle and see what happens. This rectangle has been extruded up. What is extrusion? Basically, if we have a curve and then we are saying that is extruding 10 units in Z direction, that is above, it's going to create parallel surfaces throughout its path. So by default, there is this vector given. If you click on this thing, you'll see the inputs. There is 0, 0, 10. If you change this 10 to some other number, you'll see the height reduces and increases. If you add some other number, you will see that it shifts and you get this pure skewed uh, surface. Right, so this is extrusion. Control click to disconnect. Then finally, there are two more things to go with. We look at sweep. Sweep requires two things. It requires a base and a rail. Base will be our rectangle again. Rail means it is a path, a line, along which this base will be extruded along. Because in this extrude curve, it's just parallel lines. It is just straightforward. You need a direction and the magnitude and the curve will be extruded. But in sweep, you can have a path along which this curve will, will extrude. So to create a path, let's create a curve. Uh, by interpolation. First of all, I'm going to construct three points and then we are going to interpolate it. We'll make a curve go through them. So for that, let's have three points, control C, control V, V to get these multiple things. Now, this is our rectangle, the red part, and then we've got our new points at the origin, which is also a corner of the rectangle and let us um, pull these points up. If I click here and then increase the number, you can see that it is going up. Let's make this 20. Let's make this 10. Okay, so we've got three points. I'll first demonstrate interpolate to you. Enter. Interpolate requires points. 
the red highlighted things indicate that this is necessary. The other things have got some um, default values in them. So you can see that a line has been created. And if you add another point to it, press shift, then you'll be able to connect all of these three together. If you don't press shift, then the old connection will get disconnected. Also remember the sequence, you have to put it in this specific sequence, bottom point, middle point, and then the top point. If you don't do that, and let's say you did this, you'll get something off, right? So the sequence should be maintained. Now, if I move the middle point somewhere else, by changing the X or Y coordinate, you will see that a curve is made. All right, so this will be our rail or sweep command. And as soon as I connect it, you can see that our curve, our uh, rectangular curve has been extruded along this path. And if I change that path, the extrusion is also changing according to it. Okay. And finally, we've got, we have got loft. Now loft surface requires multiple curves. So let's say we've got a rectangle at the bottom and we have a circle on top. Uh, so we've got this circle, let's change the origin, which is the center point location to 0, 0, 0, 10 or 15, so that it is above the rectangle. And then connect rectangle and circle to the loft surface. You will see that a surface has been created between these two curves. And if I have another curve, let's say again, we've got a rectangle, but it is above the circle, so let's place it at 30. You see there is a rectangle that has been created here. And then press shift and connect it to the loft surface. You will find such a form being created. And you can change the location of the circle. And you will see that this is the form that we are getting. It starts from rectangular bottom to circular middle part and then rectangle again at top. All right, so this is loft and evidently this is what we are going to be using in our twisting tower where we are going to loft all these curves, all the different floors to create the skin of our building. So let's head back to our original script. Um, we've got tutorial twisting tower. This was our original script. I'm going to create a duplicate. Click on the three dots on the right and in bottom, third from bottom, you will see duplicate. Click on duplicate. The file will open up and you will see that it has been renamed to the same name with duplicate in brackets. So you can rename it to um, twisting tower part B surfaces. Now this is where we left off, left off previously. We've got a nice small script clean and we've got our rotated rotating rectangles tagged over each other. If I simply put in loft, a skin will be created through all of them. Very straightforward, right? Because the geometry output is a list of 14 rectangles sequentially arranged. And so we get a nice loft. Now to explore the other commands, that is extrude um, surface from curve, let us add some details to this building, which is balcony. So to create balcony, what we are gonna do is we are going to offset these all these rectangles rectangles. Let me hide this. I'm going to offset all these rectangles outwards and then I'm going to create 
plane so that we get the slab and then I'm going to extrude the outer curves up to a height of 1.2 meters to get the parapet wall to get the balcony walls and give, and also I'll give thickness to all of them right so that will demonstrate some of more surface creating um, components so we've got all these rectangles let's first offset curve offset offset curve not plane offset offset curve put all these geometry in this offset thing and instantly you'll see the yellow lines that have popped up this is the offset of the original rectangles also you can see that it is rounded that is because the offset type is arc there are three types of offset arc tangent and intersection if you type in intersection or tangent you will get sharp edges I'll just show you and also remember to make it capital see tangent and then intersection it should start with capital I and then you will get this but let's uh, go with arc because it looks cooler and remember to type in capital A R C if you don't type in capital A it will show error like this okay then distance means how much you want that offset to go let's put a number slider and put in uh, yeah two would be good I think so that we can control the offset you can see this okay so we've got the offset and now we are going to create a plane in this offset and then give it thickness to give that slab so we will create surface curve to surface this curve goes into the curve to surface to get this slab and then I will give it thickness type in thickness and you will find side thickness as soon as you connect it you get thick slabs of two units which is not good we will type in 0.3 range input so that we can control it later on as well I'm giving big values so that we are able to at least see it and observe where the thickness is going towards it is going to the bottom so that's good because when we are going to extrude uh, from these offsetted curves um, it will not overlap with our slab all right so we've got the curve we created a surface and then we gave it a thickness let me hide all of the other things so that we only have the slab and also we hide this one now we've got this offset curve at the border let's extrude it up to get our um, walls balcony walls I'm going to type in extrude extrude curve put this curve here and by default the values are too big so let's put in some smaller values now I want it to control it right let's say I want it to be 1.2 range input but if you observe this is blue and this is green so it won't connect right because this is a vector and this is a number vector needs both things if you remember in the last session as well we spoke about the scalar quantities vector quantities so we are going to give it a direction give the factor of 1.2 and put this vector inside now this has become my parapet walls the balcony walls uh, it has no thickness so we can also give it some thickness and it is showing an error I've given the surface the thickness is 2 but it is not showing the thickness why because if you see the curve it's very small it's just um, how much 2 and the thickness will clash so if we reduce the thickness it should work let's give it a thickness of 0.3 perfect now we can see some thickness right so we've got our balcony wall we've got our slabs and where is our building this is our building inside this highlighted yellow color so we have explored a few of these surface commands components 
uh, you can explore more just type in surface and see what is sweep 2 it requires two rails so give two lines get a section and put and see what happens you can type in extrude and see the different type of extrusions extrude surface this extrusion requires surface our extrude requires required curve so give it a surface and see what happens um, explore that on your own uh, so surfaces we'll move ahead from surfaces and go towards applying some material and colors to these surfaces so to add material simply type in material you'll get apply material here the input is geometry and then everything else you can control color metallicity roughness opacity this is the balcony walls so let's connect it here i'm going to copy paste this material disconnect copy paste it again for three different set of um, surfaces right we've got the the slab the base the flooring and then we also have our main building all right perfect i want to show you something really really cool let me hide this because the first time i saw this i was so amazed i'll just show you i want to hide everything else we have our this surface right this curved surface I'm going to give it some color. Yes. We hide the other things. Everything is hidden. We've got our twisted building. And now, when I increase the metallicity to one and then I reduce the roughness, we get this awesome texture. I'm always fascinated by this. It's so perfect. And you can see a reflected room through it on it just perfect metallic finish so yeah it's pretty cool i mean we don't see this in rhino <laughs> i mean rhino has it but like grasshopper does not have this very basic cool so let's get the metallicity back to normal and roughness two point something and you can make it glass like and give it some transparency to so reduce the opacity to get that um perfect let's arrange everything together let's turn these preview on let me give black slabs and uh, the railing also let's give it some bluish tinge with some reduced opacity or it could be gray nice so this is our final outcome using the surface commands to wrap the entire building and then using simple logic to ex um, to get the offset of the curves offset of the floor plates and uh, get the balcony and the parapet wall and then finally you applied the materials um one last thing let's change the original sliders and see how it works so we can change the number of floors and it works we can change the floor height so the gap between each floor will change 3 meters 4.5 meters 5 meters and angle of rotation so how sharp you want the twist to be everything is controllable and all the other geometries that we just created are working just fine along with the building profile you can also give change the thickness of the slab change the thickness of the these balcony walls everything is parametric everything is controllable so i hope you found this session very useful and helpful see you in the next one